floor stand, mini tripod, mini tribrack. They go by a few different names, but they essentially accomplish the same task. They're compact, transportable survey prism and scan target holders. They're not especially high tech considering the line of work we do. And unfortunately, they're one of the best kept secrets in our industry. I have no idea why these things aren't more popular than they are. They're relatively inexpensive, pack up small and carry easily, and significantly improve the accuracy of your total station and 3D scanning work. In my opinion, one of these should be in every single surveyor's vest that runs a traverse, does high precision layout or 3D scanning, yet the vast majority of the time I bring them up to colleagues, they have no idea what I'm talking about. If you've watched my videos, you've probably seen me use these before. I never really had a plan to make a dedicated video on this topic, but a couple weeks ago I saw Rothbooker made a big upgrade to their floor stand. So I grabbed a pair of their new and improved floor stands, and after about 30 minutes into a scan job, I knew I needed to make this video. This wasn't a small difference in workflow. This was more of a, there's no way I'm going back to the way I used to do things. For the purpose of this video, let's call these mini tripods. They're small, most have three supporting legs. That term makes sense to me. I was first introduced to mini tripods about seven years ago. It's a simple concept. They're replacing either full-size tripods and tribracks or pole tripods with a compact alternative. There's nothing revolutionary in terms of the idea. Someone just basically shrunk down a backside kit, but sometimes you'll see a simple design and wonder to yourself, why didn't someone think of this sooner? Besides being more compact and easier to carry, there are also some distinct accuracy advantages of mini tripods over their larger counterparts. Because your height of target goes from about 1.5 meters or 5 feet to around 20 centimeters or two thirds of a foot, there is a huge drop in pole plumbness error. Pole plumbness error can be thought of as how accurately you're leveling your pole or tribrack over the point you're set up on and is a function of height of target and bubble sensitivity of your pole's level bubble. Let's look at three examples to see what kind of potential random error we could be reducing by switching to a mini tripod. A typical carbon fiber topo pole has a 40 minute bubble, which means the pole will be leaning 40 minutes out of plumb when the bubble moves two millimeters off center or the bubble is touching the edge of the reference circle or first graduation on the spirit level bubble, depending on the manufacturer of that level bubble. We should be able to keep the bubble centered better than two millimeters though. Let's assume half a millimeter is about typical. If that's the case, then with a 40 minute bubble and a target height of 1.5 meters, we could have four millimeters or 13 thousandths of a foot of potential pole plumbness error. But what if we use a tribrack or pole with an eight minute level bubble, such as what's on the GLS 12 or most tribracks? Well, in that situation, that potential random error calculation changes to one millimeters or three thousandths of a foot. A big improvement. I think most of us can live with one millimeter of horizontal centering error for most applications, but if we can easily reduce that source of error so it's essentially zero, would that not be desirable? After all, we have a lot of sources of error we have to deal with when surveying. If we can easily reduce one to a negligible level, it will get us that much closer to our desired final accuracy spec. Now we must also consider these equations are assuming we are using a perfectly calibrated level bubble and the random error we are calculating is entirely based on one's ability to center the bubble in the vial, but how often are our level bubbles a little bit out of calibration on our equipment? Are we checking them every single morning? Is it possible that our equipment got bumped around in the back of the truck and might be out of calibration since the last time we checked it? When we use a mini tripod, let's say a geoc that I've showcased on several videos before and apply the same equation, we see that the reduced height of target has a massive impact on the potential random pole plumbness error. Considering it has a 178 millimeter height of target with a Leica prism and a 60 second spirit level bubble, we are looking at under a tenth of a millimeter of potential random pole plumbness error. 
even if the level bubbles were significantly out of calibration at that sensitivity and that height, chances are we'd still be well under a millimeter of air. On the flip side, if we have a bubble out of calibration with a 1.5 meter height of target, we could be looking at some significant centering air creeping in, even if our pole or tri rack has an eight minute bubble. And if you're using a 40 minute bubble, you'd better be sure that you're checking your rod bubble often if you're after high accuracy observations. Using a mini tripod with a fixed height means you are essentially removing vertical centering air on your targets as long as you have that height defined accurately. This isn't unique to mini tripods as the GLS 12 poles I use with locking vertical graduations also benefit in the same way. The vertical repeatability of a fixed height pole is pretty hard to match. This is a massive advantage that plays a huge role in how one can obtain extremely tight vertical accuracy with a total station. Because of the air detection properties of post-processing raw survey data in a least squares adjustment, it is abundantly obvious when I process data where the field crew used fixed height targets versus when they are measuring height of target to the center or side of a prism. It makes a big difference in vertical accuracy. If mini tripods are so great, why doesn't everyone use them all the time? I think the biggest reason these aren't used more is just poor marketing. A lot of surveyors just don't know they exist. And of course, they have their own unique drawbacks. Like we always say, the right tool for the right job. Knowing when you can and can't use them is important. The obvious issue is obstructed sight lines. What makes mini tripods accurate and transportable, their small size, also means obstructed sight lines will be an issue. There really isn't much you can do about this except plan ahead when setting control points for a total station. If you can set a control point one foot to the left and that means you can see to the ground past an obstruction, do that. But of course Murphy's Law tends to rear its head whenever we surveyors are working and as soon as you set up with a clear line of sight, I'd swear some invisible light and siren goes off that alerts everyone within a two mile radius to park their car in front of the perfectly clear path you were about to sight down. If I'm setting a point that I won't actually set up the instrument on, such as a point to be used for a resection or scan targets, I can set it up off the ground to give it some extra height that helps negate this issue. And getting it off the floor where it could be ran over or kicked by someone walking by, which unfortunately is an all too common occurrence, is always a great idea, especially with these small, harder to see back sights. Even coned off, we've lost a couple mini tripods to cars running them over. However, when it comes to using a mini tripod to hold scan targets, this is really a non-issue because you have a lot of flexibility of where you can set your tripod mounted static scanner, or if you're using SLAM, you can usually walk somewhere you'll be able to scan the target in. You're not restricted to defined control points that you have to scan from. Even if you're doing a resection, this becomes less of an issue as you generally have a lot more options of where you can set up. Stability can be an issue depending on which mini tripod you're using. I've had Geox blow over from the wind catching the backstop of the prism. Their design leaves them susceptible to this, but if you're careful to point them so the back two feet are bracing against their direction of wind, you should be okay. Depending on design, mini tripods can be a real pain to use in grass or dirt. I've tried with the Geox a few times and usually I have to find a little rock to push under each of the legs so they don't dig into the soil and even then it's not a great solution. They're designed to be used on hard surfaces. Since the RS floor stand has rubber feet, I haven't found this to be much of an issue. I've used them in grass, I've used them in dirt, and haven't ran into a problem with either. I have also had durability issues with the Geoc mini tripods. The level bubble broke on this one pretty easily. They come in these cheap red bags which essentially have non-existent padding. Luckily these tripods are cheap so if they break it's not a big deal as long as you have a bunch of replacements on hand. The RS floor stand on the other hand has a much beefier level bubble and the overall build quality is night and day versus the Geoc. Now I wouldn't suggest letting a car run it over, but I wouldn't hesitate for a second to throw one of these in a vest pocket with other equipment, whereas with the Geox, you have to be much more careful and keep them in their bags. 
Those spirit level bubbles are not well protected and they just break fairly easily. That about covers all the cons I've come across when using a mini tripod. What about the pros besides air reduction? First and foremost would be transportability. If you use tripods and tribacks for a backsight or foresight, we're talking about 20 to 30 pounds per kit you have to lug around. Not to mention the room it takes up in your work truck once you start putting three or four full-size tripods in there. And if air travel is in the books for your job, good luck bringing a bunch of tripods and tribrack kits with you. Been there, done that, it sucks. The other alternative would be prism poles with tripods. These are a bit smaller and a fair amount lighter, but they're still bulky and cumbersome. It's not the end of the world if I'm traversing, as either way I have to walk back to the control point to set and pick up my prism, but if I'm using mini tripods, I can carry more than one with me at a time. In fact, I can fit three mini tripods with prisms fairly comfortably in my survey vest with me and still have both hands free, especially with the RS floor stands that fold right up. The real game changer as far as transportability goes when it comes to pairing a RS floor stand with a Roth Booker one point fits all paddle target when scanning. I'm telling you, if you scan with control, and I sure hope if you scan you are using control, you need to grab one of these. A typical workflow for using floor set control points such as a typical Traverse Hub when terrestrial scanning is that as you scan your way through a site, you're bumping a pole tripod, also sometimes referred to as a target pole, that's holding a black and white retro reflective or spherical scan target. So every 200 feet or so you have to stop scanning run back, get the target pole, and place it on the next control point you want to use. You lose a lot of time this way. If your site is small and you have a lot of target poles, you can set them all up before you start scanning, but I always hate the idea of leaving a pole and target unattended. And you still have to spend a bunch of wasted time walking to every control point twice, once to set up the target and once to take it down. Whereas if I'm using the RS floor stand, I have it and a paddle in my vest pocket at all times. When I'm about two scan positions out from the next control point I want to use, I start the scanner, run up, place the target, and by the time I'm walking back to the scanner, it's probably finishing up and ready for me to move the scanner into position for the next scan that will capture the newly placed target. Once I'm done with that target and move the scanner to a new position and start the next scan, I run back and grab the target and place it back in my pocket. There's literally zero wasted time or effort when scanning this way. The fact that you can fold the mini tripod up and place it into your pocket and the target or prism comes on and off with a magnet is what separates the RS floor stand from all other mini tripods I've seen. The one point fits all system was great before, but this opens up so many other options when using it. Besides the big bump in productivity from transportability, you must also consider setup time. I can set up and level a mini tripod in maybe 10 seconds if I'm taking my time. I cannot consistently set up a tripod and tribrack over a control point and measure the height in 10 seconds. Obviously a pole tripod is much quicker, but it's still not as fast as a mini tripod. Adhesive scan targets are another great option for scan control, but they have their drawbacks too. You're limited to setting them on vertical faces for the most part, and since you have to shoot them in reflectorlessly, they carry quite a bit more air. And because you really should tie them in as near perpendicular to the line of sight of the total station as possible to retain a decent level of accuracy, you are limited to where you can place them and where you have to set up your total station. You're also setting a bunch of extra targets over and above all the traverse points you already set. A few weeks ago, I was on a fairly large scan job setting the control and QC targets for the scan crew and we were using black and white adhesive targets and I just couldn't get past what a waste it was that none of my traverse hubs were being used as scan control because we didn't want the scan crew lugging around target poles and paddles slowing them down. If they each had their own floor stand and RS paddle, it would have saved a ton of time and probably doubled the scan control accuracy by being able to use the traverse hubs versus reflectorlessly observed adhesive targets. Not to mention I have way more flexibility where I can set a concrete nail or scribe versus an adhesive target. 
And at the end of each job, we usually have a lot of adhesive scan targets set up around site that clients usually don't want left on their building. So we have to walk back and peel them all off and hope like hell, we don't have to come back to site and rescan because if we do, we would need to reset scan control targets. Besides using the RS floor stand for scan targets, I can grab one of my RS prisms and use it as I would any other mini tripod. They also make a 5 8 threaded version if I want to use other accessories that are threaded in the standard 5 8 UNC that is commonplace for survey gear, such as non-Leica prisms and other scanning targets. If I want to use one of my Leica prisms, I can throw on a spigot adapter. I can even use this mini tripod to hold a GNSS receiver. I fly a lot for work and by being able to bring one less tripod and tryback for the base is a big deal for me. Or thinking back on my bush surveying days up north, we often had to hike miles into a site. Sometimes it meant setting my base by the truck and hoping the external radio would reach if I wasn't set up to create my own end trip connection. When you're talking about hiking a few miles horizontally with a thousand feet of vertical relief between the truck and your site, you strip down every piece of unnecessary equipment. If I could have fit a base tripod and tri rack in my vest pocket, that would have opened up a lot of options. Or maybe I'm surveying along and want to take a 15 minute GNSS observation on a point without having to stand there the whole time and watch it. I'd rather take a floor stand out of my pocket, throw on the rover head, and collect data while I'm working on something else. I'm telling you, these things are so handy. Some of the simplest ideas are oftentimes some of the most effective ideas. These little contraptions aren't as complex as the automatic target recognition system in our total stations or the inertial measurement unit inside of our 3D scanners, not even in the same ballpark but the increase in efficiency and accuracy they can bring us is not small potatoes. They are more transportable, economical, and accurate compared to the alternative. What's not to like? These really should be way more mainstream in surveying and scanning than they are, and I'm making a prediction now. In a couple of years, these are going to be a lot more commonplace. It's an absolute no-brainer. If you 3D scan, if you use a total station, even if you just use GNSS, don't sleep on these. Well, that wraps up another one, but don't go too far because we got some very cool projects being worked on that I'm extremely excited about. Thank you all for watching, and as always, subscribe if you want, like if you feel it's warranted, and I'll see you next time.